In this movie, as we continue to look at advanced ways to use the particle emitter in Anime Studio Pro, we're going to deal with a feature we've just lightly touched on, and that happens to be image layers. Layers where you actually work with pixel-based art instead of some of the vector-based art that we've done to date. This will give us the ability to create some very believable types of little cloud effects with a feature called sprites, at least it's called that in the 3D world, where the particles themselves are little photographs that have transparent borders or little pixel images. Let me show you what I mean. We'll go ahead and if you want to get to your working files, we'll go to import image. And when our window pops open, we are in the 08 special effects folder of the working files particles. And we'll go ahead and select Explosion Sprite PNG. Ping files are unique in the fact that they have a level of non-destructive compression to them, meaning they shrink in size while they also retain what's called alpha information. Alpha information is transparency. Let me go ahead and open this and let me show you what I mean. Oh, it's huge. Let's go ahead and change that. We can if we want. Well, actually, we really only have one way here, and that is to actually reduce the size of the layer. Keyboard shortcut 2 to work with this, and we'll make it a little bit smaller. The alpha information, the transparency information, is contained in this file that was created in Adobe Photoshop. It actually is a picture, a digital picture of a cloud that's had some of the blue sky taken out and a little bit of extra little work to make it more popcorn-like or you know, just a little puff of, of dust or dirt that's, that's clean, that's not brown. Certainly you could change this in a photo editor if you wanted to, but that is our single object right there. This is what we're going to put into a particle emitter. Let's go ahead and add a particle emitter right now. Particle, and we'll name this something like burst. Our sprite has already been named. And now when we go ahead and drag the explosion sprite layer into the burst particle group and select the burst particle group, oh, suddenly we're getting something that looks a little bit like snow. This feature is going to help us see some elements that we have just lightly touched on in the particle emitter settings so far. If we scrub the timeline right now, we'll see that we've got these things going out and they kind of come down. It's a little fountain made with clouds. Now, of course, most explosions don't occur that way. And what if we wanted a fairly sophisticated type of explosion? How would we do that? This is how we will accomplish it now. Working with photographic textures like this and complex types of things takes longer to render, actually significantly longer to render with Anime Studio Pro than it does working with simple vector-based art. You'll see why, because we start getting some very complex things going on. Additionally, as the program figures out the render, the animation, it's remembering where every single little pixel is that makes up this image, unlike the vector art where it's just remembering basically where a formula is and the formula defines the shape. So there's some, some big differences in file sizes. We'll open the settings for our burst layer, come to particles. We've got one called orient particles. This is something that's usually enabled when you want a higher degree of randomness to the way your particles rotate. If I turn this off at the moment and click OK, the particles all come out of the emitter pointing the same direction. If you look at these two little, it looks like feet sticking out of the bottom. When we go ahead and move the timeline and scrub that, the particles stay in the same position. And it obviously, obviously is a single image being repeated. When we come back to our settings, selecting orient particles goes ahead and creates much more random settings at that point. You can also do randomized playback if you want to and how they appear. I'll leave that alone at the moment. Or you can make them even more predictable and that's something you might want if you were doing machine gun bullets or something like that. A gun that's shooting one thing over and over in one direction. You can have them evenly spaced. You won't want them oriented and they'll just come out perfect just the way you want. Great way to work with that tool set. So let's assume we want an explosion coming out of the center and everything goes in different directions and then it fades away. Well, the first thing we want to do then is to go ahead and stop this from emitting up or out with a range. We'll leave it at 90 right now, but we'll give it a spread of 360 degrees. This means that from the center of the emitter, it comes out in all directions. 
I don't want any acceleration down. I want this to just go straight out like a starburst, so I'll change the rate to zero. For particle count, you know, I really don't think we'll need 100, so let's bring this down to something more like, oh, 40, 45. We'll still preview with 20. And then the lifetime, what I will do here is I don't want the particles to just blink out and go away. I want them to exist for a while. I'm going to put in our little shortcut we learned in the last movie, zero, which means that they last for a long time. They never go away. And then we've got a source width of 0.1 by 0.1. I'll leave that the same and no depth at this point. If we were going to be moving the camera around the scene, I would select the point at camera option in the generals tab. And I would also give it a source depth of the same as the X and the Y values right here. With these features enabled right now, let's go ahead and select OK. We see we've got everything in the center. If I scrub the timeline, we see these things blow apart like that. Now that's perfect for what I want. And then the next step is going to be to go ahead and change the opacity so this disappears over time. We'll do that in our next movie.